Hello there, this is James Oscar from Desert 1978, and recently I was commissioned to watch all 11 episodes of the seventh season of the TV series American Horror Story entitled Cult, and make a video reviewing the first three episodes, then a second video reviewing the next three, and so on and so forth. And at the risk of giving away my opinion within the first minute of this video, let's just say that having watched the first three episodes, I honestly wouldn't waste my time watching the rest of this contrived, superficial, trope-ridden, and frustratingly ludicrous paint by cliches garbage if I hadn't already been paid. Basically what I'm saying is that it isn't very good. Did that come across? It isn't very good. According to the person who commissioned these videos, the gimmick of American Horror Story is that it's an anthology series in which every season, although some actors do apparently reprise some characters in later seasons, the cast take on different roles in an entirely different story, like a theatre troupe performing Rent one season and the next performing King Lear. And the hook of this season, the thing that's supposed to make it stand out and was no doubt the basis of the marketing, is that the foundation of the horror is supposed to have been the election of Donald Trump. However, this appears to have been a deliberate con and blatant false advertising because beyond the intro of the very first episode, which is literally just a rehash of the same old brutal election night 2016 realities, truisms, stereotypes and cliches, with one woman howling with grief, terrified that she and her wife aren't going to be legally recognised as being married anymore, which by the way, since the appointment of Brett Kavanaugh, aka the whitest man who ever sniffed, is now a real and concrete threat, and another character raging against everyone, including his own wife, who decided that this was a good time to stay at home or make a protest vote when Trump won Michigan by fewer than 11,000 votes and 40,000 voted for Jill motherfucking Stein, including, ironically, the woman who I just mentioned, with the fact that she couldn't bring herself to vote for Hillary even being brought up again when the couple are having an argument and her wife is on the verge of leaving her in episode 3, but anyway, this is the wrong channel to be talking about this bullshit, and the point is that beyond these trivial mentions, Trump's election is entirely incidental and superficial to the actual plot of the story, and on those few rare occasions when it is included, it is crowbarred in in such a ham-fisted, melodramatic and tone-deaf manner, to put it mildly, forcing in monologues about how everything was sunshine and roses when Obama was elected and Trump fans shouldn't get too comfortable because his victory was merely an aberration, as well as a San Diego-born American citizen being suspected of the murder of his racist and xenophobic colleague, being asked none too subtly about his documentation status, and when he is killed himself, being dismissed as another criminal who was asking for it solely because he is Latinx. And all of this being the case, it wouldn't surprise me at all if after the shock election result, the creators of this series had just hastily rewritten the formulaic and trope-written pile of cliches that they had called a script, which was already greenless and ready to go, making the scary blue-haired psycho who I assume to be the leader of the titular cult a Trump thumper, and his enthralled sister a woman who dropped out of college to work full-time for the Hillary campaign, when, as I've hopefully indicated, this has no effect on anything in the story beyond sending the message that, hey, Hillary supporters are also deranged and dangerous freaks who show videos of brutal murders on the dark web to young children. Because make no mistake, my friends, the first three episodes are literally nothing but a string of contrived horror movie and crime thriller tropes and cliches, desperately pretending that it is topical and relevant by pinning up some culture war Trump versus the progressives window dressing. And this genuinely worries me because according to the person who commissioned these reviews, the opening of each season is supposed to be the strongest aspect of it before it all ultimately falls apart. Leaving aside what happens in the later episodes though until I've actually watched them, the third episode in particular brought to mind the film Arlington Road, in which a suburban cult cell, or whatever we choose to call them, manipulates a man into unwittingly becoming the next Timothy McVeigh, because so far the cult's plan appears to be to gaslight the aforementioned lesbian wife and mother into joining them by driving her insane with fear and deceiving her into destroying everything that she's ever loved, using the fact that she has 
crippling phobias, including a pathological fear of clowns against her, with the first episode boiling down to the frustratingly tedious and contemptuous horror movie trope of there being a constant question mark hanging over whether the clowns attacking her and others are real, or if she and her son are simply hallucinating, the second episode literally boiling down to Chekhov's pistol, because she acquires a gun for protection and guess what happens next, and the third episode boiling down to the equally done-to-death trope of she's right and it's all a conspiracy against her, but no one will believe her because everyone thinks that she's insane, revealing that yes, at least some of the people who we assume to be so from the very first moment that we saw them are indeed members of the cult, and it all seems to be a part of the blue-haired Trump fan's cunning plan to destroy her and turn her to the dark side, so to speak, as a microcosm for his ultimate plan to use fear to cause people to embrace tyranny. Never apologise for anything. If you want to matter as a human being, you have to make the rest of the world wrong. Seriously, I would be insulted by how blatant and allergic to subtlety this story is if so much of it wasn't so utterly ridiculous and absurd that I'm more outraged by the thought that somebody somewhere will actually take it seriously, such as when the protagonist inevitably shoots the Mexican-American man I mentioned earlier in the most obvious and lazily executed example of Chekhov's pistol that I have ever seen in my life, meaning that honestly no spoiler warning is necessary, and the name who are a part of the evil conspiracy against her turn up wearing sombreros and yelling at her about her hashtag white privilege. Because although this is intended to be a deliberate straw man with the two cultists slash Trump fans putting on the role of the grotesque caricature that is the SJW in order to turn this progressive lesbian against everything that she's ever stood for in a radical bastardization of the whole fairy story that the authoritarian left is driving rational moderates into the arms of the far right, the fact that the protagonist is portrayed as literally suffering from hashtag Trump derangement syndrome, living with severe anxiety and phobias that were exacerbated by Trump's election, along with the blue-haired freak sister having been a full-time Hillary staffer, means that whether it's through overcompensation or otherwise, the series actually portrays the psychopathic Trump fan and what assumes at this point cult leader as being less irrational, dangerous and insane as the hashtag hashtag progressive left. Then there's the bullshit with the coffin at the beginning of one episode that honestly made me hope for a second that the lesbian protagonist's story arc had been left unresolved and they were now going to simply move on to an entirely new protagonist because it came out of nowhere and no different from the Trump premise had essentially nothing to do with anything, just another scene thrown in apropos of nothing because somebody thought that it would be scary or even funny, like the microwaving of the guinea pig Yes, really. Or the guy who's too stupid to realise there's an ad saying don't call, don't write, just show up at our house hard as a rock is malicious and that he's being used to harass two oblivious women, even when the women in question are screaming at him to get out. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, there's also apparently a joke in inverted commas about a trans male member of the cast playing a MAGA hat wearing Trump thumper because hashtag irony, apparently forgetting that Caitlyn Jenner ever existed, but his appearance in the first episode is so short and cliched, being another crowbar in moment which has nothing to do with the actual scene in question, his absence from the second and third episodes are so unremarkable, and everything else about the season so far is so irredeemably pathetic that I honestly did not notice or care. So in summary then, whoever wrote this storytelling equivalent of weak old pig squill desperately needs to be kicked repeatedly in the head until their eyeballs switch places, and don't be surprised if it takes me a while to summon the patience to watch the next episode, never mind the next three.